gang, Cat Daddy Jackson here, and uh, it is that time again. The time where you ask me questions and I just somehow into it. The answers where I go into your cat's minds and I pull out. Anyway, so uh, today our question comes from Jacob in Australia. And Jacob has a question about his cats, Violet and Pepsi. Pepsi. Pepsi the cat. All right, on man, whatever, you know, you go with that. Now, Jacob's question goes on for quite a long time, so let's break it up a little bit. Here's the first part. Well, I've got the perfect opportunity for you to plug your product. But in all seriousness, uh, my cats are going pretty well, but I do have kind of a recurring issue that I've been kind of bumping my head against even before I got this one over here. This one's name is Violet, and there is a giant cat over there uh, called Pepsi. The issue I'm having is um, playtime. Not necessarily getting them to play, but getting them to play in the right order, because I've been trying for the last few months to introduce, you know, a morning kind of ritual playtime routine. But they always seem more interested in play after they've finished a meal rather than when they've gone through all the effort of hunting down their food. I end up having to play with them after um, they have um, finished their uh, meals. Um, and I'm thinking like, am I breaking you know, the natural cycle here? Is this gonna have any side effects? All right, so Jacob, we're gonna start breaking this down for you because you know what, I love it. You're totally inquisitive and it seems like you've really been embracing the cat mojo ethos and everything, which I have so much appreciation for that you're trusting me with your cats. So I think it's a fantastic question actually. Basically what Jacob is asking is, I want my cats to get into the hunt, catch, kill, eat way of being and I wanna structure their lives well, but my cats are about eat, hunt, catch, and I can't get them to turn around. That's a great question for a number of different reasons. Your cat having that burst of energy after they eat is absolutely logical, right? We're all that way. We eat and then that, that material in our body turns into nutritional information. It gives us that get up and go, unless you know, you're know you eating something that makes you like, you know, blah. Um, yeah, so main questions are, how do I um, put them in a more strict hunt, catch, kill routine? You know, how do I make that the, the, the play part of the play and then eat cycle uh, more interesting? Instead of focusing on the toy, they're begging for food. <laughs> and that's not exactly conducive to a good play environment because it's just like, no, 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 I don't want to hunt. I want to, I want to, I want to eat. And then if you put the toy in front of me, I will try and kill it. And I'm just like, Bitch, then you're gonna be hungry again. Uh, uh, so, um, got any advice on that? It would be most appreciated. Thanks. Well, Jacob, your cat has a really unique accent. Cool. That also is something to be respected. Anyway, it's okay if your cat's main energetic output is after the food. That's okay. I want them to be driven towards the hunt anyway, even if that doesn't mean like hanging from the chandeliers and running all over the place. I would like you to try to get them involved in, in exercise before they eat. The fact that they need to just blow off some steam afterwards, absolutely okay. Listen, Jacob, if you got the time to go hunt, catch, kill, eat, hunt, catch, kill, eat, catch, kill, hunt, you know what I'm saying. If you got the time for that, go with it, man. How do I keep playtime interesting? Because I got this a couple of days ago. I actually got a, a ground pr prey um, item as well, which uh, she chases and he chases a little bit, but he's also terrified of. So if you're asking me about toys, variety is great, Jacob. And, and you're showing me anyway that you bring in different toys and at different times. One thing to remember is put your toys away after play sessions. They need to know that the arrival of the toys means something. And if that is food, so be it. You know, if they are driven by food and not by the actual play itself, if they know, well, I just gotta get through this in order to get my food, that's totally cool. But variety is the spice of life. And not knowing what toy is gonna come out of the basket, what we're 
we're gonna do today, is it gonna be air, is it gonna be ground, really helps. And different textures to toys also. Pepsi is actually afraid of the ground prey toy. That should also be respected. There are a lot of cats who are petrified of the feather flying above their head. And if one cat is afraid of the thing that's dragging on the floor, try something else. It's okay, I won't take it personal. If that ground prey attachment is scaring him a little bit, put something else. Use the feather, use it on the ground, and just be very slow about it. Don't put it in his face. Actually, it's something that's moving away from him. If you want to really trigger the prey mentality, the predator mentality, then make the prey go away because that's what prey would do. The prey would go away and the predator would go after them. So disappearing around the back of the couch, things like that will help. At the end of the day, Jacob, number one, you're doing a fantastic job by both Violet and Pepsi. Uh, you're clearly a doting dad and, and I, you have all my love for doing that. In terms of being disciplined with Hunt, Catch, Kill, Eat, do it, don't worry about how it looks to them or, or how much they're getting out of it. Just get them into the process. And if their really fun playtime is right afterwards, don't worry about making them hungry again. Don't worry about anything. Have some fun. It's recess time after their meal. And if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. It's all good, Jacob. It's all about making sure that you're getting into the three R's. And the three R's again, our routine, ritual, rhythm. As long as the, the, their life has three R's to it, whatever it looks like in between, that's all for people who write books. Thanks, Jacob, for a great question, some great footage, and that magnificent quarantine bedhead. This week's Cat Mojo rock stars, well, they're Midna and Ori, man. These guys are just the ultimate shoulder cats sitting on the shoulder of Sabine and a mystery bald bearded man. And here's a shout out to all bald bearded men. So if you want to send in your questions to see if I'll answer them, or if you have a candidate for the Cat Mojo Rockstar, all you got to do is send it to this link right down here, jacksongalaxy.com forward slash submit. And that way you can ask the question, little hint, if you show me some video of your cats, and especially if your cat's doing the behavior, better chance of me answering. And as far as rock stars go, if I got to tell you what a rock star is, don't bother. Bring it on, you guys. Till next time, light, love, and mojo to you.